You know, I had the opportunity, thanks to the speaker, uh, to address the entire General Assembly several months ago as it related to the tragedies in Buffalo and Vivaldi. Uh, and uh, I'm not going to speak about any of that now, uh, other than to indicate we're now at 314 mass shootings and it's only July. Now, my proudest moments in the legislature over the last five years uh, relate to being a part of a whole array of legislation concerning reasonable gun regulation. There have been several iterations of that, and most recently this July, Governor Murphy signed seven bills, one of which uh, creates a right of the Attorney General, which I'm proud to have been the prime sponsor of, to go against gun manufacturers and distributors that knowingly violate our law. But before I talk in any great detail about that, I just want to work backwards just a little bit and talk about another bill that I had sponsored, the red flag laws. Back in 2018, when they were signed by the governor, there were those who said they're going to be misused. Uh, people are going to use them to take away our weapons. Well, I guess that we have, uh, based upon loved ones, teachers, and others uh, who had intimate knowledge of an individual that had weapons that was a danger to themselves or others, they were able to go to law enforcement a thousand times in the last three years. And of those thousand times after due process of the courts, all but a handful, uh, those weapons were removed from those dangerous people. Lives were absolutely saved of innocent victims and frankly of those individuals themselves who would have likely been self-destructive. That's a thousand times in three years in a population of nine million. That is and will continue to be a part of the solution. Now, without getting into, again, the public nuisance law, I just, again, want to go back into our history because I feel like we have to just a little bit. You know, there's this mythology out there about that the NRA has created uh, regarding, oh, we need to arm ourselves to the teeth as far as standing up to the tyranny of government uh, should they move against us. Number one, well, that's just ridiculous. As a matter of fact, uh, the only crime set forth in our Constitution uh, is treason. And what is treason but for taking arms up against the Constitution? Quite frankly, it was put in there on the basis of uh, what our founders were concerned about, not what they meant to put in that place uh, for us to take advantage of as citizens. And second was related to self-defense. And while we all agree uh, back to the common law that self-defense is something that uh, should be recognized, uh, certainly uh, it had nothing to do with the Second Amendment. Uh, there was not a lot of personal violence among people that lived back at that time, number one. Number two, nobody had handguns unless you were wealthy. Number three, you didn't want to have to get your musket ready in case somebody was breaking in because by the time you put it together, you were a lot better to pick up a two by four. It's just the mythology. And here are facts. In 1967, California laws related to being able to have a concealed weapon that was loaded. Uh, that changed out of concern of the California state legislature that that was going to be used in some vigilante way, and Governor Ronald Reagan signed the restriction of that law. It was only after the tumult of the 60s that in the early 70s, the NRA stole the narrative, the gun lobby, uh, to be able to say what the Second Amendment was about uh, was the right and absolute right to defend oneself, and an opposite of 200 years of our history up to that point in time. Uh, it was an easy sell to indicate that, hey, the only thing that stops a bad person with a gun is a good person with a gun. Ironically, Hollywood played into that, uh, going back to, gosh, from the Lone Ranger to Dirty Harry to Jason Bourne, these people that are on the outskirts of uh, society with this moral compass make everything right with a gun. Of course, that's ridiculous, but that's the perception. Uh, what we do is we're a bunch of legislators that armed with good statistics will go forward and make good policy and make incremental change to make us safer. Uh, but Matt Damon uh, or Tom Cruise can't sell that movie. But that's the direction that we have to proceed. So now let me talk about the, uh, the law that is now one that, uh, that we should consider and that's regarding civil responsibility for gun manufacturers. In 2005, President Bush and the Congress then gave, for the first time in our history, uh, industry total immunity uh, from civil liability. I guess their logic was, hey, what's a gun for anyway? It's to harm or to kill, so how could you hold someone civilly responsible for that? 
But they did happily keep one exception, the predicate exception, and it was if there was a knowing way that those manufacturers or distributors violated state laws, that they could be held accountable. And now our state law says that they will. I'll give you one example, ghost guns. As opposed to our rules that say you have to be a certain age and have to have certain training or otherwise to be able to have in background checks to be able to uh, possess a weapon, uh, they get around that. They'll mail two different pieces of a gun that a child could put together and circumvent our laws. That will no longer be the case, and that's just one example of what the Attorney General will be able to do to keep our reasonable gun regulations intact. So, is our job done? You know. Is anything just a part of the solution? You know, certainly it is. Uh, we're never going to bat a thousand. We're just going to help with our batting average. And the truth be told is that New Jersey has the third lowest per capita number of deaths based on gun violence in the nation. So we know it works. And our job is clearly not done. The Supreme Court, in what I believe is a terrible ruling, just ruled that uh, there's an unrestricted right in American citizens to be able to carry a concealed loaded weapon. Can you imagine? Police and military say, that's ridiculous. Uh, without range time, without training, uh, how could we allow that to happen? There's no question that there's going to be needless deaths based upon that ruling. But we need to do something about it. The court opened a little bit of a door that said sensitive places are such that uh, we could restrict individuals from coming in with loaded guns. Now there's an executive order out there, but we need to do more. The legislature comes in and has to define those sensitive places. Places like houses of worship, schools, public buildings, theaters, places where they serve alcohol, places where we gather like MetLife Stadium or, or The Rock, uh, or as it relates to just gatherings of a thousand people or more. Uh, we have to continue to be a part of the solution, and together we will.